Morning class. So today we're going to be going over your chapter 35, Geriatric Emergencies. Special patient population applies a fundamental knowledge of growth, development, and aging and assessment findings to provide basic emergency care and transportation for a patient with special needs. Geriatrics, impact of age-related change on assessment and care. Changes associated with aging, psych psychosocial aspects of aging and age-related assessment and treatment modifications. For the major common geriatric diseases and or emergencies, cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases, neurologic diseases, endocrine diseases, Alzheimer's disease, and dementia. Patients with special challenges, recognizing and reporting abuse and neglect, healthcare implications of abuse and neglect. Trauma applies fundamental knowledge to provide basic emergency care and transportation based on assessment findings for an acutely injured patient. Special considerations in trauma, recognition and management of trauma in the geriatric patient, pathophysiology and assessment and management of trauma in the geriatric patient. Introduction, geriatrics, geriatrics is the assessment and treatment of disease in a person 65 years of age or older. Geriatric patients present as a special challenge for healthcare providers. Injuries and illness are affected by chronic conditions, multiple medications and the physiology of aging. Generational considerations, uh, it is important to understand and appreciate how the life of an older person might differ from yours. It takes time and patience to interact with an older person. Treats patient with respect and with regards to every patient, um, treat every patient with respect. Every patient deserves respect and dignity on every call. So make every attempt to avoid ageism. Not all older people have dementia. Not all older people are hard of hearing and not all older people are sedentary or immobile. Effective verbal communication skills are essential. Communication techniques, speak respectfully, identify yourself, be aware of how you present yourself. Look directly at the patient at eye level, speak slowly and distinctly. Have one person talk to the patient and ask only one question at a time. Do not assume that all older patients are hard of hearing. Give the patient time to respond. Listen to the answer. Listen to what the patient's telling you. Um, have them explain why they called you um, or, or what the situation might be. Explain what will you, what you will do before you do it. Um, and this goes in regards to every patient. Uh, if you're going to do something, um, tell the patient. Uh, you know, even taking a blood pressure. Hey, I'm going to take your blood pressure real quick. Um, that way they they don't get spooked or um, scared that you might touch them. So common complaints and the leading causes of death in older people. Geriatric population is predisposed to a host of problems not seen in youth. Hip fractures are common, more likely to occur when bones are weakened by osteoporosis or infection. Sedentary behavior can lead to pneumonia and blood clots. So some common conditions. Um, and older patients, geriatric patients, they're going to have hypertension, arthritis, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, asthma, uh, chronic parcritis or emphysema, stroke, and then all your leading causes of death down here. Um, and it go along with uh, some of their common conditions as well. So changes in the body. The aging process is accompanied by changes in physiologic function. All tissues in the body undergo aging. Decrease in the functional capacity of various organ systems is normal, but can affect the way a patient responds to illness. Normal changes uh, should not be mistaken for signs of illness. Genuine uh, symptoms should not be attributed to just getting old. Changes in the respiratory system. Age-related changes can predispose an older adult to respiratory illness. Airway musculature becomes weakened, uh, alveoli, and the lung tissue becomes enlarged and the elasticity decreases. Uh, body's chemoceptors uh, slow with age. Pneumonia, inflammation, infection of the lung from bacterial, viral, or fungal causes. Leading cause of death from infection in America, Americans older than 65 years. Aging causes some immune suppression and increases the risk of contracting infections like pneumonia. Increased mucus production, pulmonary secretions, and infection all interfere with the ability of the alveoli to oxygenate with the blood. Wear respiratory protection when you are assessing a patient with a potentially infectious uh, respiratory disease. 
Pulmonary embolism, a condition that causes a sudden blockage of an artery by a venous clot. Patient will present with shortness of breath and sometimes chest pain. Usually pinpoint chest pain, um, sudden onset, uh, and shortness of breath is a good indicator of uh, pulmonary embolism. Uh, there's not much you guys can do out in the field to, to treat this patient, but provide oxygen and immediate transport to the hospital. <laughs> Pulmonary embolism risk factors, living in a nursing home, recent surgery, history of blood clots or heart failure, presence of a pacemaker or central venous cat catheter, uh, obesity or sedentary behavior, recent long distance travel, trauma, cancer, paralyzed extremities. So if patients sitting down, um, they have a long flight across country um, and they're sitting down for way too long, kind of blood pools in the lower legs. Uh, and it could coagulate and build up into a clot. And once the patient stands up, that clot could travel upwards uh, into the lungs or the heart. So pulmonary embolism presents with tachycardia, sudden onset of dysme dysmia, shoulder, back, or chest pain, cough, syncope in patients in whom the clot is larger, anxiety. Apprehension, low-grade fever, hemoptysis, leg pain, redness, and unilateral pedal edema. Fatigue, uh, cardiac arrest, that's a worst case scenario, uh, but it can happen. Uh, these patients do not get the treatment that they need. Change in the cardiovascular system. The heart hypertrophies with age, cardiac output declines, arteriosclerosis contributes to systolic hypertension. Many people tend to limit physical activity and exercise as they grow older. Geriatric patients are at risk for atherosclerosis. Accumulation of fat and cholesterol in the arteries. Major complications include myocardial infarction and stroke. Affects more than 60% of people older than 65 years. So here's a picture of atherosclerosis in a normal blood vessel. Um, you got the outside, and you got the muscular wall, uh, you got your lining. Okay, so as cholesterol builds up it can cause plaque and it can narrow uh, your blood vessels so this is why it's important to have a good diet as well um, not eat uh, fatty junk food all the time because it could clog your arteries and potentially lead to a heart attack older people are, are at an increased risk of formation of an aneurysm abnormal blood filled dilation of the blood vessel wall severe blood loss can occur Blood vessels and heart valves uh, become stiff and degenerate. Heart rate becomes too fast, too slow, or too erratic. Another vessel-related problem is venous stasis. Loss of proper function of the veins and the legs that carry blood back to the heart causes blood clots. Deep vein thrombosis can lead to pulmonary embolism. People usually exhibit edema of the legs and ankles. Heart attack. The classic symptoms of heart attack are often not present in geriatric patients. Silent heart attacks are particularly common in women and people with diabetes. Any of the following symptoms may be a manifestation of acute cardiac disease. Dyspnea, epigastric and abdominal pain, loss of bladder or bowel control, nausea and vomiting, weakness, dizziness, lightheadedness, syncope, fatigue or confusion. Other signs and symptoms include issues with circulation, diaphoresis, pale cyanotic or mottled skin, abnormal or decreased breath sounds, uh, increased peripheral edema. Heart failure. The signs and symptoms will differ depending on whether the right or left side of the heart is not functioning correctly. Right sided heart failure usually occurs when the fluid backs up into the body, causes jugular vein distension or JVD, ascites, peripheral edema, and an enlarged liver. Right sided heart failure is often caused by left sided heart failure, so it is common to see signs of both. When left sided heart failure, fluid backs up into the lungs, causes a condition called pulmonary edema and shortness of breath. The patient will have severe shortness of breath and hypoxia with crackles or rails in the lungs. Proximal uh, nocturnal dyspnea, characterized by a sudden attack of respiratory distress that wakes the person when he or she is reclining, caused by fluid accumulation in the lungs. Uh, patients report coughing, feeling suffocated, and cold sweats. You'll notice tachycardia. If you, if you suspect congestive heart failure, ask do you sleep sitting up.
So stroke, leading cause of death in older people, preventable risk factors. Smoking, hypertension, diabetes, AFib, obesity, and sedentary lifestyle. Uncontrollable factors, age, race, and gender. Signs and symptoms, acute altered level of consciousness, numbness, weakness, or paralysis on one side, slurred speech, difficulty speaking, visual disturbances, headache and dizziness, incontinence, seizure. Hemorrhagic strokes are less common and more likely to be fatal. Broken blood vessel causes bleeding into the brain. Ischemic strokes occur when a blood clot blocks the flow of blood to a portion of the brain. The treatment goal is to salvage as much of the surrounding brain tissue as possible. The symptoms occurred within the past few hours. The patient may be a candidate for stroke center therapy. Transient ischemic attack, TIA, can present with the same signs and symptoms as a stroke. Changes in the nervous system. Changing in thinking speed, memory, and posture stability are the most common findings. The brain decreases in weight and volume. There's a 5 to 50% loss of neurons in older people. The performance of most of the sense organs declines with increasing age. Vision. Visual acuity, depth, perception, and ability to accommodate to light change with age. Cataracts interfere with vision. A decreased tear production leads to drier eyes. Inability to differentiate colors, decreased night vision, inability to see up close, uh, other diseases, glaucoma, macular degeneration, retinal detachment. Hearing. Hearing problems can cause, in the, ch cause changes in the inner ear, making hearing high frequency sounds difficult. Problems with balance make falls more likely. Uh, Percussus is a gradual hearing loss. Heredity and long-term exposure to loud noises are the main factor. Um, so taste, decrease in the number of taste buds. As you get older, uh, your taste kind of starts to go a little bit. You're going to decrease in the, the number of taste buds. Negative result might be lessened interest in eating, which can lead to weight loss, malnutrition, complaints of fatigue. Touch, decreased sense of touch and pain perception from the loss of the end nerve fibers. An older person may be injured and not know it. Decreased sensation of hot and cold. Dementia, slow onset of progressive disorientation, shortened attention span, and loss of cognitive function. Chronic and general irreversible condition that causes a progressive loss of cognitive abilities, psychomotor skills, social skills. Dementia is a result of many neurologic diseases and may be caused by Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, cerebrovascular accidents or CVAs, uh, genetic factors. On assessment, patients may have short and long-term memory loss, uh, have a decreased attention span, and be unable to perform daily routines, show a decreased ability to communicate, appear confused or angry, have impaired judgment, be unable to vocalize pain. Delirium, sudden changes in mental status, consciousness, or cognitive processes marked by the inability to focus, think logically, and to maintain attention. Affects 15 to 50 percent of hospitalized people aged 70 years or older. Acute anxiety may be present. Generally result of reversible physical ailments such as tumors, fever, or metabolic causes. In the history, look for withdrawal from alcohol or sedatives. Uh, medical conditions. Psychiatric disorders such as depression, uh, malnutrition or vitamin deficiencies, environmental emergencies. Assess and manage the patient for hypoxia, hypovolemia, hypoglycemia, and hypothermia. You may see changes in circulation, breath sounds, motor function, and pupillary response. Syncope. Assume this is a life-threatening problem until proven otherwise, often caused by an interruption of blood flow to the brain. Um, so here are some of your possible causes over here. Dysrhythmia is a heart attack, vascular and volume changes, and neurologic cause. Um, neuropathy, disorder of the nerves of the peripheral nervous system, function and structure of the peripheral motor, sensory, and autonomic neurons are impaired. Symptoms depend on which nerves are affected and where they are located. Motor nerves, muscle weakness, cramps, spasms, loss of balance, loss of coordination. Sensory nerves, tingling, numbness, itching, pain, burning, freezing, or extreme sensitivity to touch. 
Autotomic nerves, changes in blood pressure and heart rate, constipation, bladder, and sexual dysfunction. Changes in the gastrointestinal system, a reduction in the volume of saliva, dental loss, gastric secretions are reduced. Changes in gastric motility occur. Incidence of certain diseases involving the bowel increases. Blood flow to the liver declines. Age-related changes in the GI system. Issues with dental problems, decrease in saliva and sense of taste, poor muscle tone of the sphincter between the esophagus and stomach, decrease in hydrochloric acid, alterations in absorption of nutrients, the weakening of the rectal sphincter. GI bleeding can be caused by inflammation, infection, or obstruction of the upper or lower GI tract, usually heralded by hematemesis. Bleeding that travels through the lower digestive tract usually manifests as melena or dark tarry stools. Uh, red blood usually means a local source of bleeding, such as hemorrhoids. A uh, patient with GI bleeding may experience weakness, dizziness, or syncope due to the, the blood loss. Um, so this is why I ask you, uh, diarrhea, ask what color it is, um, ask what consistency it is. And then if patient's coughing anything up, always ask what color it is too. Um, this could give you a good indication on if the patient's sick or if the patient has a GI bleed, um, what stage of sickness they might be at. Specific GI problems in older patients include diverticulitis, bleeding in the upper and lower GI system, peptic ulcer disease, gallbladder disease, and bowel obstruction. When assessing patients, ask about NSA aid and alcohol use. Um, orthostatic vital signs can help determine if a patient is hypovolemic. Blood pressures and pulse rates are obtained with the patient lying, sitting, and standing. Note any drop in blood pressure and increase in heart rate that occurs as a patient moves to an upright position. Acute abdomen non-gastrointestinal complaints, extremely difficult to assess in the pre-hospital setting. Most serious threat from abdominal complaints is blood loss. Abdominal, abdominal aortic aneurysm, AAA, is one of the most rapidly fatal conditions. Walls of the aorta weaken and blood leaks into the layers of the vessel. If enough blood is lost, shock occurs. Changes in the renal system. Age brings changes in the kidneys. Reduction in renal function, reduction in renal blood flow, and tubal uh, degeneration. So decreased bladder capacity, decline in sphincter muscle control, decline in voiding senses, increase in nocturnal voiding, benign prosthetic hypertrophy, and large prostate. Incontinence is not a normal part of aging. It can lead to skin irritation, skin breakdown, and urinary tract infections. Stress incontinence occurs during activities such as coughing, laughing, sneezing, lifting, and exercise. Urge incont incontinence is triggered by hot or cold fluids, running water, or think about going to the bathroom. The opposite of incontinence is urinary retention or difficulty urinating. urinating. In men, enlargement of the prostate can place pressure on the urethra, making voiding difficult. Bladder and urinary tract infections can also cause inflammation. In severe cases of urinary retention, patients may experience renal failure. Um, and also, you could ask when the last time a patient used the bathroom. Um, if they haven't used the bathroom in a while, um, that could be a serious issue as well. And then also ask what color it is. That might give you an indication that um, kidneys aren't functioning. There's a problem with the kidneys. So changes in the endocrine system. Reduction in thyroid hormones or thyroxine. Signs and symptoms. Slower heart rate. Fatigue. Drier skin and hair. Cold intolerance. Weight gain. Other endocrine changes include an increase in the secretion of antidiuretic hormone causing fluid imbalance. Hyperglycemia. Increases in the level of nore norepinephrine possibly having a harmful effect on the cardiovascular system. Hypersmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome, or HHNS, is a type 2 diabetic complication in older people. On assessment, you may see warm flesh skin, poor skin turgor, um, pale dry and oral mucosa, furrowed tongue, signs of shock. So HHNS is a uh, high um, blood sugar or hyperglycemia and it's only seen in type 2 diabetes. Um, usually when somebody has hyperglycemia and a type 1 diabetes 
It's a uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. So uh, you guys should remember that. That might be a test question. Assessment of the patient should include obtaining blood pressure, distal pulses, auscultation of breath sounds, temperature, assessment of blood glucose level if permitted by local protocol. Changes in the immune system. Infections are commonly seen in older people because of their increased risk, less able to fight infections. Anorexia, fatigue, weight loss, falls, or changes in mental status may be the primary symptoms. Pneumonia and UTIs are common in patients who are bedridden or also who have catheters as well. If the catheter hasn't been changed in a while, um, could also place them at risk for being, getting a UTI. Signs and symptoms may be decreased because of loss of sensation, lack of awareness, or fear of being hospitalized. Changes in the musculoskeletal system, decrease in bone mass, especially in postmenopausal women. Bones become more brittle and tend to break more easily. Joints lose their flexibility. A decrease in the amount of muscle mass often results in less strength. Changes in physical abilities can affect older adults' confidence and mobility. Muscle fibers become smaller and fewer. Motor neurons decrease in number. Strength declines. Ligaments and cartilage of the joints lose their elasticity. Cartilage goes through degenerative change. Osteoporosis is characterized by a decrease in bone mass. Reduction in bone strength and greater susceptibility to fracture. Extent of bone loss depends on genetics, body weight, smoking, alcohol consumption, level activity, and diet. Osteoarthritis is a progressive disease of the joints that destroys cartilage, promotes the formation of bone spurs, and leads to joint stiffness. Results from wear and tear affects joints in the hands, knees, hips, and spine. Changes in skin, proteins that make the skin pliable decline with age. Layer of fat under the skin becomes thinner. Bruising becomes more common. Sweat glands do not respond as readily to heat. Pressure ulcers become a problem, sometimes referred to as bed sores or decubitus ulcers. The pressure from the weight of the body cuts off the blood flow to the area of the skin. With no blood flow, a sore develops. So especially with people who are unable to move themselves or paraplegics, they need to be um, um, moved uh, to a certain side uh, just to get that blood flow going um, or else they're going to get a, a bed sore. Stages of ulcer development, stage 1, non-blanching redness with damage under the skin. Stage 2 is blister or ulcer that can affect the dermis and epidermis. Stage 3, invasion of the fat layer through the fascia. And stage 4, invasion of muscle or bone. Uh, so toxicology, older people are more susceptible to tox toxicity because of decreased kidney function, altered GI absorption, decreased vascular flow in liver, kidneys undergo many changes with age. Decreased liver function makes it harder for liver to detoxify the blood and eliminate medications and alcohol. So this is why it's important um, that uh, older people monitor their medications, monitor their alcohol intake, especially when they get placed on a new medication. Um, and also being placed on a new medication may cause medical problems. It may cause them... Uh, but I have a syncopal event. Um, so you could always ask uh, any change or any new uh, medications that they might be on. This might be causing the medical problem that you're being called for. So a typical OTC medications or over-the-counter medications can have negative effects when mixed with each other or with herbal substances, alcohol, and prescription medications. Polypharmacy refers to the use of multiple prescription medications by one patient. Negative effects can include overdosing and negative me medication interaction. Medication noncompliance occurs due to financial challenges, inability to open containers, impaired cognitive vision, and hearing ability. So sometimes older patients, they forget to take their medication or they think they've already taken it um, and they actually take um they either forget to take it or they take it again uh, because they, they forgot they took it earlier. So depression. Depression is not part of normal aging but a medical disease. Treatable with medication and therapy, depression goes unrecognized or untreated. It is associated with a higher suicide rate in the geriatric population. 
Risk factors include history of depression, chronic disease and loss. The following conditions contribute to the onset of significant depression, substance abuse, isolation, prescription medication use, chronic medical condition. Suicide. Older men have the highest suicide rate of any age group in the United States. Older persons choose much more lethal means than younger victims, generally have diminished recuperative uh, capacity to, to survive an attempt. Common predisposing events and conditions include the death of a loved one, physical illness, depression, and hopelessness, alcohol abuse, alcohol dependence, loss of meaningful uh, life roles. When assessing a patient who is displaying signs of depression, it is appropriate to ask if he or she is considering suicide. If the answer is yes to the next question, it should be, do you have a plan? Include this information in your report and also uh, ask for PD um, or let the hospital know when you bring them in. A uh, patient might, be, have to, might have to be put on a hold. Um, usually if they're on, they have a plan, they're going to be put on a hold. The Gems Diamond. Uh, created to help you remember what is different about older patients. Not intended to be a format uh, for the approach to geriatric patients or replace the ABCs of care. Serves as an acronym for the issues to be considered when assessing every older patient. Geriatric patient. Older patients may present atypically. Be familiar with the normal ages, changes of aging. Environmental assessment. Environment can help give clues to the patient's condition and the cause of the emergency. Medical assessment. Older patients tend to have a variety of medical problems and numerous medications. Obtain a thorough medical history. Social assessment. Older people may have less of a social network. They may need assistance with activities of daily living. Consider obtaining information pamphlets about some of the agencies for older people in your area. Assessing an older pa person can be challenging because of communication issues, hearing and vision de deficits, alterations in consciousness, complicated medical histories, effects of medication. So scene size up. Geriatric patients are commonly found in their own homes, retirement homes, or skilled nursing facilities. Many older people do live alone. Uh, access may be hampered if their condition prevents uh, them from getting to the door. Take note of any negative or unsafe conditions. You might have to Report that to the hospital um, and get APS or Adult Protective Services to come and check them out and see if they're able to care for themselves. Um, you know, also be a patient advocate for your patient. If the patient's struggling to be by themselves, it's probably better off that they're in a home, that they have someone to look look after them. Um, and also the nurses might ask you, what condition was their house in? So mechanism of injury, MOI, nature of illness, may be difficult to determine older people with altered mental status or dementia. Ask the family member, caregiver, or bystander why he or she called. Multiple and chronic disease processes may also complicate the determination of the NOI. Chest pain, shortness of breath, and an altered level of consciousness should always be considered. Primary assessment, address life threats, uh, determine the transport priority, form a general impression. You should be able to tell if the patient is generally in stable or unstable condition. Use the APU scale to determine the patient's level of consciousness. Airway and breathing. Anatomic changes that occur as a person ages predispose geriatric patients to airway problems. Ensure that the patient's airway is open and not obstructed by dentures, vomitus, fluid, or blood. Anatomic changes affect a person's ability to breathe effectively. Loss of mechanism that protect the upper airway cause a decreased ability to clear secretions. Airway and breathing issues should be treated with oxygen as soon as possible. Circulation. Poor perfusion is a serious issue in the older adult. Uh, physiologic changes may affect negatively, may negatively affect circulation. Vascular changes and circulatory compromise might make it difficult to feel pulse. Transport decision. Any complaints that compromise the ABC should result in prompt transport. Determine conditions that are life-threatening. Treat them to the best of your ability. Provide transport to, pri to priority patients. Priority patients are those who have poor general impression, airway or breathing problems, acute level of, con level of consciousness, shock, severe pain, uncontrolled bleeding. Older people will easily decompensate. History taking. Investigate the chief complaint. Find and account for all medications. Obtain a thorough patient history. Determine early whether the altered LSC is acute or chronic. 
Multiple disease processes and multiple and or vague complaints can make assessment complicated. Collect sample history. You may have to rely on a relative or caregiver to help you. List the patient's medications or take the medications with you to the hospital. Sometimes the patient has a bag of medications or a box of medications. I'm not going to spend 10 minutes on scene writing down every single medication the patient has. I'm going to go ahead and just bring that with me. Uh, and then the last meal is particularly important to patients with diabetes. Transport to a facility that knows the patient's medical history if possible. So always ask them which hospital would you like to go to or which hospital you're normally seen at if there's multiple hospitals within the area. Secondary assessment may be performed on scene en route to the emergency department or not at all. If physical examinations, an elder patient may not be comfortable with being exposed. Protect his or her modesty. Consider the need to keep your patient warm during exam. Vital signs. The heart rate should be in the normal adult range but may be compromised by medications such as beta blockers. Weaker and irregular pulses are common. Circulatory compromise may make it difficult to feel a radial pulse. Consider other pulse points. Blood pressure tends to be higher. Capillary refill is not a good assessment. Respiratory rates should be in the same range as a younger adult. Be sure to auscultate breath sounds. Remember, you're taking breath sounds on every call, uh, but they're especially important on patients with respiratory problems. Carefully assess pulse oximetry data. Reassessment. Reassess the geriatric patient often. Reassess the vital signs. Reassess the patient's complaints. Recheck your interventions. Identify and treat changes in the patient's condition. Interventions. Maintain a position of comfort. Assist ventilations as needed. Administer glucose for a patient with diabetes who is hypoglycemic. Um, follow your local protocol. Know what the, that range is for hypoglycemia. In specific cases, you may also assist with nitroglycerin, aspirin, or inhalers to provide psychological support. Communication documentation. Communicate your findings and the interventions you use to emergency department personnel. Document all history, medication, assessment, and intervention information. So here's a little table for all your guidelines for your geriatric patient assessment. You guys could go through that a little later. Trauma in geriatric patients. Conditions that create risk and complicate assessment. Slower homeostatic compensatory mechanisms. Limited physiologic reserves. Normal effects of aging on the body. Existing medical issues. Physical findings in an adult, older adult may be more subtle and more easily missed. Mechanisms are much more minimal. Recuperation from trauma is longer and often less successful. Many injuries are under triage and under treated. Because of changes in the body, older pedestrians are more likely to have life-threatening complications after being struck by a vehicle. Commonly suffer injury to the legs and arms. Other injuries can be caused by a secondary collision onto the street, often involving the head. Older people are more likely to experience burns because of an altered mental status uh, and inattention and compromised neurologic status. Risk of mortality is increased when pre-existing medical conditions exist. The immune system is weakened. Fluid replacement is complicated by renal compromise. Higher mortality from penetrating trauma in older adults, especially gunshot wounds. Penetrating trauma can easily cause serious internal bleeding. Falls are the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries in older adults. Uh, nearly half of fatal falls in geriatric patients result in traumatic brain injury. Um, so this is part of basically any trauma protocol. Um, any falls in an adult older than 65 is going to fall under a, a trauma guideline, uh, possibly a, a trauma alert for the hospital. Always ask if they're on blood thinners. Always ask if they hit their head. A um, couple questions to keep in mind. So anatomic changes in trauma, changes in pulmonary, cardiovascular, neurologic, and musculoskeletal systems make older patients more susceptible to trauma. A geriatric patient's overall physical condition may lessen the body's ability to compensate for simple injuries. As a result of osteoporosis, older patients are prone to fractures, especially the hip, contributing factors, stresses of ordinary activity, a standing fall, vitamin D and calcium deficiencies, metabolic bone diseases, tumors. 
Geriatric patients with osteoporosis are also at risk for pelvic fractures. With age, the spine stiffens as a result of shrinkage of disc spaces and vertebrae becoming brittle. Compression fractures of the spine occur. Because brain tissue shrinks with age, older patients are more likely to sustain closed head injuries. Uh, acute subdural hematomas are among the deadliest of all head injuries. Serious head injuries are often missed because the mechanism may seem relatively minor. So remember, anything over 65 is going to fall under your trauma guidelines, um, especially if they hit their head, especially if they're on blood thinners. Um, that's all going to meet trauma criteria. So you want to take that person to a trauma center if possible. Other factors that predispose an older patient to a serious head injury include long-term abuse of alcohol, recurrent falls or repeated head injury, anticoagulation med medication. So environmental injury, internal temper temperature regulation is slowed. Half of all deaths from hypothermia occur in older people, including most indoor hypothermia deaths. Um, death rates from hyperthermia are more than doubled in older people. People older than 85 years are at higher risk. Special consideration in assessing geriatric trauma patients. Trauma is never isolated to a single issue when you're assessing and caring for a geriatric patient. Scene size up. Look for clues that indicate your patient's traumatic incident may have been preceded by a medical incident. Bystander information may help. MOI is important in establishing whether an injury is considered critical and it affects treatment and transport considerations. So primary assessment, address life threats, determine the transport priority, recommend did that older trauma patient be transported to a trauma center. Uh, form a general impression, is the patient's condition stable or unstable. Use APU and the Glasgow Coma Scale to determine mental status. Airway and breathing, if the patient is talking to you, the airway is patent. Patients who have noisy respirations have airway can promise. Older patients may have a diminished ability to cough, so suctioning is important. Assess for the presence of dentures. Circulation. Manage any external bleeding immediately. Drinking alcohol and taking anticoagulant medications can make internal bleeding worse or external bleeding more difficult to control. Older patients can more easily go into shock. Patients who were hypertensive prior to injury may have a normal BP when they're actually in shock. History taken. Investigate the chief complaint. Uh, investigate why you were there. Uh, ask questions. Considerations in your assessment must include past medical conditions, even if they are not currently acute or symptomatic. Secondary assessment, physical examination is performed in the same manner as for any adult with any, but with consideration of the higher likelihood of damage from trauma. Any head injury can be life-threatening. Check lung sounds, look for bruising and other evidence of trauma. Vital signs, assess the pulse, blood pressure, and skin signs. Capillary refill is unreliable because of compromised circulation. Remember that some older people take beta blocker, blockers, which will inhibit their heart rate from becoming tachycardia. Reassessment, repeat the primary assessment. A geriatric patient has a higher likelihood of decompensating after trauma. Interventions, broken bones are common and should be splinted. Do not force a patient with a joint flexion or kyphosis into a normal uh, position. Provide blankets and heat to prevent hypothermia. Communications and documentation. Communication can be challenging. Uh, provide physiological support as well as medical treatment. Assessment of falls. Falls can be caused by medical conditions such as fainting, cardiac rhythm disturbance or a medication interaction. Whenever you assess a geriatric patient who has fallen, it is important to find out why the fall occurred. Consider that the fall may have been caused by a medical condition, possibly life-threatening. Respond to nursing and skilled care facilities. Many calls will occur at a nursing home or other skilled care facility. Calls can be challenging. Patients often have an altered level of consciousness. Staff may be spread thin and may not know how to assist you um, or may not even know the patient. Ask what is wrong with the patient, what is new or different today. Infection control needs to be a high priority for EMTs. Uh, MRSA infections are common. Um, many infections in hospitals are caused by vancomycin resistance uh, enterococci. 
Uh, the respiratory syncytial virus causes an infection of the upper and lower respiratory tracts. So especially in nursing homes, um, infections, diseases, uh, they spread like wildfire. Um, so remember to protect yourself um, and then protect others. Uh, C. diff is a bacterium responsible for the most common cause of hospital-acquired infectious diarrhea. Typical alcohol-based hand sanitizers do not inactivate or kill C. diff. Dying patients. More patients are choosing to die at home rather than in a hospital. Dying patients receive palliative care, be understanding, sensitive, and compassionate. Determine if the family wishes for the patient to go to the hospital or stay in the home. So especially when you guys run up calls on older patients, you want to ask them if they have a DNR or ask family members if they have a DNR. That will let you know what kind of medical treatment um, you, you will do or can't do. Um, and then also uh, let the hospital know as well. So always remember, uh, ask for a DNR with older patients. So advanced directives, specific legal papers that are direct relatives and caregivers about what kind of medical treatment may be given to patients who cannot speak for themselves. Dealing with advanced directives has become more common for EMS providers. So like I said, advanced directives are a, a DNR form. Uh, Sometimes patient is a full code, um, which means family wants CPR or they want every, want you to try everything for the patient. Sometimes it's a full DNR, do not resuscitate, do not do any chest compressions, nothing on the patient. And sometimes it's limited interventions. Sometimes they just want chest compressions only. Sometimes they just want medications um, to help ease any pain or suffering. Um, so make sure you read that DNR when they hand it to you. May take the form of a do not resuscitate. Your DNR order gives you permission not to attempt resuscitation for a patient in cardiac arrest. DNR does not mean do not treat. Basic ABCs should still be provided. Um, and then go off that DNR. When transporting patients from nursing facilities, consider these guidelines. Patients have the right to refuse treatment if they're alert and oriented times four. A DNR order is valid only if it is in the form of a written order by a physician. Review state and local protocols. When in doubt, try to resuscitate the patient. That's the only way you're going to protect yourself in some situations. Start basic CPR. Just start compressions. Call your medical director if you got any any questions or any uh, uh, conflicting reports. There's two family members on scene and one wants compressions and CPR and one doesn't. Start compressions. Call the medical director, let them know what's going on, um, put that in the doctor's hands. Elder abuse and neglect, any action on the part of an older person's family member, caregiver, or other person that takes advantage of the older person's person, property, emotional state. Includes acts of commission and acts of omission. The extent of old, elder abuse is not known for several reasons. It has been largely hidden from society. Definitions of abuse and neglect among the geriatric population vary. Victims are often hesitant to report the problem because they feel like they're going to be taken away and put in a nursing home. Uh, the abused person may feel traumatized by the situation or may be afraid that the abuser will punish him or her for reporting the abuse. Elder abuse occurs more often in women older than 75 years. Abusers of older people are sometimes products of child abuse themselves. Uh, take note of the environment and conditions a patient lives in and of soft tissue injuries that cannot be explained by the person's lifestyle and physical condition. Suspect abuse when answers are concealed or avoided. Suspect abuse when you're given unbelievable answers. Information that may be important in assessing abuse includes Caregiver apathy about the patient's condition, overly defensive reaction by caregiver, caregiver does not allow patient to answer questions, repeated visits to the ED or clinic, a history of being accident prone, unbelievable or vague explanations of injuries. Information that may, may, may be important in assessing abuse includes psychosomatic complaints, chronic pain without medical explanation, self-destructive behavior, eating and sleeping disorders, depression or lack of energy, substance and or sexual abuse history. Uh, repeated abuse can lead to a high risk of death. Um, so there's different types of uh, or categories of elder abuse. You have your physical and your psychological and your financial. Um, these are all types of abuse. Um, just because they're not getting uh, physically abused 
Um, it could be getting psychologically abused or even financially abused. Signs of physical abuse. Inflicted bruises are usually found on the buttocks and lower back, genitals, inner thighs, face, and ears. Pressure bru bruises caused by the human hand may be identified by oval grab marks, pinch marks, or handprints. Human bites are typically inflicted on the upper extremities and cause lacerations and infection. Typical abuse from burns is caused by con contact with cigarettes, matches, heated metal, force immersion, and hot liquids, chemicals, electrical power sources. Check for signs of neglect, such as lack of hygiene, poor dental hygiene, poor temperature regulation, lack of reasonable amenities in the home. Uh, regard injuries to the genitals or rectum with no reported trauma as evidence of sexual abuse in any patient. Geriatric patients with altered mental status may never be able to report sexual abuse. Many women do not report cases of sexual abuse because of shame and the pressure to forget. So review, the least common cause of death in patients over 65 years of age is So D, the leading cause of death in patients over 65 years of age are heart disease, diabetes, stroke, cancer, pulmonary diseases, and trauma. Drug overdose, intentional or unintentional, is not a leading cause of death in this age group. So according to Gems Diamond, a person's activities of daily living are evaluated during the So B, the GEMS Diamond was created to help you remember what is unique to older people. During the social assessment, the S and the GEMS Diamond, the patient's activities of daily living, e.g. eating, dressing, bathing, toileting, are evaluated. Are these activities being provided? If so, by whom? Are there delays in obtaining food, medication, or other necessary items? So a condition that clouds the lens of the eye is called... So A, as people get older, cataracts or clouding the lens of the eye may interfere with vision. Glaucoma is a condition caused by increased inter interocular pressure, IOP. Nystagmus is caused, characterized by involuntary movement of the eyes. Astigmatism is an optical defect that causes blurred vision due to the inability of the eye to focus an object into a sharp focus image of the retina. You're called to a neatly kept residence for an 80-year-old woman who lives by herself. She burned her hand on the stove and experienced a full thickness burn. When treating this patient, it is important to note that. So remember, as you get older, your sensors your sensory and motor functions kind of slow down a little bit. So D, in older patients, the sense of touch decreases due to a loss of the end nerve fibers. This loss is in conjunction with the slowing of the peripheral nervous system, causes a delayed reaction to pain. In this particular scenario, there is no indication that the patient has been abused. Partial and full thickness burns to the hands, feet, face, and genitalia are considered critical burns regardless of the patient's age. The slow onset of progressive disorientation, shortened attention span, and loss of cognitive function is called. So C, dementia is defined as a slow onset of progressive Disorientation, shortened attention span, loss of cognitive function, Alzheimer's disease is an example of dementia. In contrast to dementia, delirium is an acutely altered mental status, such as that caused by hypoglycemia. A 71-year-old man with a history of hypertension and vascular disease presents with tearing abdominal pain. His blood pressure is 80 over 60. His heart rate is 120 beats a minute. His respiration is 28 breaths a minute. Your assessment reveals that his abdomen is rigid and distended. Considering his medical history and vital signs, you should be most suspicious for...
So A, arteriosclerosis is a vascular disease in which the arteries thicken, harden, and calcify. This places the patient at risk for stroke, heart disease, bowel infarction, and hypertension. Among other conditions, hypertension and vascular disease are significant risk factors for an aneurysm, a weakening in the wall of an artery. Patient's vital signs, abdominal pain, and rigid distended abdomen should make you highly suspicious for leaking abdominal aortic aneurysm. So which of the following is a physiologic change that occurs during the process of aging? So C, as a person gets older, certain anatomic and physiologic changes occur. The alveoli and lungs become less elastic, even though their overall size increases. Blood pressure gradually increases, secondary to the process of arteriosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. A decline in the kidney function occurs because of a decrease in the number of nephrons. By the age of 85 years, a 10% reduction in brain weight occurs, which causes an increased risk of head trauma. So which of the following conditions make the elderly patient prone to fractures from even minor trauma? And which of these uh, conditions cause the bone to weaken? So B, osteoporosis, a decrease in bone density that causes the bones to become brittle, makes elderly patients prone to fractures even from minor trauma. It is especially common in postmenopausal women. Uh, polypharmacy is a term used to describe a patient who takes So break that word down. Um, what does poly mean? So A, polypharmacy is a term used to describe a patient who takes multiple medications every day. The more medications a patient takes, the greater the risk of a negative drug interaction. Inflicted bruises are commonly found in all the following areas except So D, inflicted bruises are typically found on the buttocks and lower back, genitalia and inner thighs, cheek or earlobe, upper lip, and inside the mouth and neck. Bruises in these areas should increase your index of suspicion for uh, abuse.